Welcome to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil, the official Monster Jam podcast. I'm Scott Jordan. It's a big week here in the Monster Jam studio. It is our third season finale of Inside Monster Jam, and there's no better way to spend it than by previewing the 2025 Stadium Championship Series. To help me with that, we're going to start with Stadium Championship Series East. We're going to fire up the Great Clips hotline to welcome in Monster Mutt's Chris Kohler. Chris, welcome back to Inside Monster Jam. Hey, it's good to be back. It's been a while. It has been a while, man. I got you flying solo. I, I, I talked to you off air a little bit, but what, this is the season finale, man. It's, it's, it's a huge deal. I need charisma. I need fun. I need excitement. When I looked at that stadium championship series yeah. in this lineup, I said, I got to have Kohler, man. So I text you right away, and you're, you're gracious with your time. I appreciate you being here. Uh, but first, before we uh, talk about 2025, let's put a bow on your 2024 season, man. What, what, how do you think your season went uh, from start to finish? It was good. I don't think I hit all my goals. I think there was a couple of things I wanted to do, and I didn't get to really fully accomplish. But I always kind of shoot high because if you don't make it, at least you had – such good progress where if you kind of set a low goal, you don't really kind of get to where you need to be. You know, it's you kind of hit that goal early in the year and you're not kind of pushing for anything else the rest of the year. And so how do you think you can uh, take what you learned in 2024 and, and sort of advance past that and, and have the best 2025 uh, year of your career? Definitely kind of just work on just being more consistent. Like I had a really good year. I won, I think, three freestyles in three different bodies, which to me is a pretty crazy feat in yeah. itself. But uh yeah, just consistency. Like, I do okay in skills here and there, and then racing's hit or miss. If I can get my racing down good and I can get my skills down good, I think freestyles are covered. I just got to work on those two, kind of just round myself off as a driver, and then we'll have, I think, a pretty killer year. You know, you, you were responsible for quite a few highlights for our broadcast season this year. I think one of the big ones for me was the return of Northern Nightmare for you. And I know that meant a lot for you and, and your dad to be in Detroit. Uh, your dad brought out that awesome Detroit Lions Avengers scheme. And was that the highlight of your year to be in Detroit and, and, and to win freestyle in Northern Nightmare? 100%. I mean, to even go home and do a show in like Detroit itself was out of this world. We had so many friends and family. So many people came out, you know, I think even my ex-girlfriend came and seen it. So it was pretty crazy. And uh, to bring back the Northern Nightmare and the custom Lions body, we, uh, we had that plan the Lions body for a long time. And once uh, they started doing good that year, so it really worked out perfect. So we brought that out. And then the Northern Nightmare, they called me. I think I only knew probably like two weeks before they gave me the call and like said, hey, we need you to run this. Like, what do you think? No brainer. I mean, that body is a legendary. Cam McQueen legendary. So to do that and then get a win behind it too, I mean, couldn't, couldn't really beat that. Kind of highlight, almost probably the highlight of my Monster Jam career, that freestyle itself. And that's the ultimate flex to win in front of your ex-girlfriend. That's the ultimate flex right there, man. Just show her what she's missing, man. I won. Look at me. Look at me. All right. Let's, uh, let's talk about your series because this, this is a strong one from top to bottom. So uh, I'm, I'm going to list off the names here. I know you, I'm sure you know them, but our fans may not. Tyler Menega, Cynthia Gautier, Armando Castro, Barry Musawa, Colt Stevens, Camden Murphy, your team, Kevin Crocker, your dad, Jim. You get Joe Foley back, Mike Christensen, Dalton Widener moving on into stadium. So let's let's talk about the elephant in the room, the unbeatable albatross in this lineup, Tyler Menega. How do you, as a, as a driver, when you when you get your lineup, you know where you're going, and you see Tyler Menega, the guy, all he does is win. How how do you plan for something like that? Um, I mean, you can't think of it that way. I mean, obviously he does, he kills, he does great, but I kind of like to think I'm a bit of a kryptonite because sometimes I'll go out there if I'm having a good night racing. If he gets me or if I get him, he'll come up to me after and he'll tell me he's like, "Dude, I saw you on the other side of the bracket," and I was kind of starting to sweat a little bit because he knows once once you're on, you're on, you know. Yeah. And and Tyler's the same way; he's so consistent. So I don't know. You kind of just got to go at it like it's somebody else. You don't think it's Tyler. You don't think it's Ryan. You don't think it's any of those guys. They're just no normal people. You know, they'll have their on nights and their off nights. But if you're just hoping and praying that they have an off night in order for you to win, you're going to be sitting there waiting a long time. I mean, yeah, I'm going to make a note here. Wednesday, October 2nd, Chris Kohler calls himself Kryptonite to Tyler Menega. I want to make sure I use that for the podcast for next year. Yeah. Uh, you get Hopefully my stat show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you get Cynthia Gautier back in Monster Jam after expanding her family. She is a freestyle force to be reckoned with. you think Cynthia could possibly cut into your freestyle wins? Um, I don't think so. I think the biggest person to cut in is Tyler. And uh, probably, like, dad started picking up near the end of the year. But Cynthia, she kills it. She's good at freestyles. I'll give her that. She does super good. and But she's had a year off. I've done a couple shows there in the summer. And she was kind of regaining her, like, footing. She was getting back into it. And it seems like – it almost seemed like she didn't – she never left because she was still crazy in the freestyles. But I think the first couple weeks are going to be her trying to catch up because, I mean, we had such a big year this last year. I think everyone kind of didn't take off on her. But taking a year off is pretty big in terms of a point series. So I think she's going to be spending a lot of time doing a lot of catch-up. 
where we're going to catch up more with you coming up next. We continue on with Stadium Championship Series East with Chris Kohler. Come right on back. More Inside Monster Jam powered by Lucas Oil is next. Welcome back to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. I'm joined by Chris Kohler as we discuss Stadium Championship Series East. So some big changes in Team Scream. We heard uh, just a little while ago, a few months ago, uh, Corey Rommel stepping away from Team Scream. He posted on Instagram he's focusing on uh, his business, taking some time away. You get Kevin Crocker back for the first time since 2020. So uh, talk about the transition from Corey to Kevin. Yeah, uh, I think personally it's a pretty cool transition. So Kevin's been with us the last... I would say he hasn't driven since like 2020, but he's been with us kind of crewing and helping me out. Mainly he's my guy, helping us out the last two years. So to have him come back and he's been kind of itching to drive. He won't admit it. He's like, oh, I'm over it, whatever. But now that he's back in, he's super excited. So it was kind of a good fix. You know, Corey wanted to get out, take a little bit of a break, work on his business, whatever. It's all taken off. So good for him. We're ending on good terms. He had his fun. We had our fun. And now we're bringing in Kevin. And I think for Team Scream, I think Kevin couldn't be a better addition. He knows the mechanical side of things. And uh, yeah, he knows the truck's already in and out because he's been with us. So I think he's going to do great. And we get uh, Freestyle Foley back in uh, his bread and butter acts. So he had uh, one of the amazing, most amazing freestyle seasons of any driver last year, leading the series in wins. Uh, and Joe, obviously, I'm sure is very happy to go back to acts, correct? Yeah, he's super excited. Joe with his firefighter background, he's super excited to be back in his own little fire truck. You know, he's kind of weird. He's weird about it. He loves that thing more than I've seen anybody love any other truck. It's it's a, it's a weird obsession. It's a strange relationship. Right? About having fire trucks, but <laughs> even like going down the road, we're driving. If there's a fire truck that drives by, like he'll he'll be screaming out the window, like yelling, "Go get him, guys!" Like just I don't know what it is. I mean, he probably has one of those uh firefighter hats on him at all times. Yeah. He loves it so. He's excited. I think you should just, I think at Firehouse Subs, they actually give those out. We should just go get him a couple. And that's what he should wear during freestyle under his helmet is one of the Firehouse Subs. Uh, I'm telling you, I've caught him wearing them in the hotel room a couple of times. <laughs> He's, he wears them around. Oh, man. All right. Let's let's uh, let's move on. <laughs> we're, we're, I think I need to get Joe back on the show. You get Dalton Widener, who who moves into a stadium yes. series for the first time. Uh, uh, 2024 Arena Racer of the Year. Uh, really, really set the world on fire at world finals in the racing bracket didn't win but really did well so what are your thoughts on racing dalton week in and week out he's gonna make it hard i think he's a two thought was pretty fast but i think dalton's a little faster so i think this year the racing's gonna be a little harder from that team uh dalton's consistent he's just like what i was saying earlier it's hard to be consistent for me and he has that in racing he's so good at running the same pass over and over again and just getting faster every single time i think him camden and tyler they're gonna take home a lot of racing wins this year they're gonna make it hard to beat but once you get by those guys, you're going to be doing a lot better. You feel a lot more relaxed racing everybody else. And another thing, too, with racing him is it's going to make your night easier because or your year because it is harder in the beginning. But I think harder racers push harder drivers. So it's going to make you have to run harder to keep up. So I think it might be better for me, honestly, to kind of have faster racers. So I got to go faster in the long run. Yeah, and Mike Christensen had a breakthrough year, I think, in, in 2024. He won, uh, I believe, each competition at some point. So Mike is, even though he's the head of that team, he has a lot of responsibility. You know, you've seen that being an independent driver. Mike has nights where he's unstoppable. Yeah, he's good. He's good, too. I don't know if he got a freestyle win. I don't want to take that away oh, from he, him, but he yeah. said every competition. Oh, he, I don't know you, if he got one may, of those. You may be right. I think, that, that out. I think that was a year ago. He did win skills in racing this year, yeah. Yeah, that, he did, and he did. And he was, that 191 race, and there was no stopping him. This truck's yeah. got power, and he was just, that course is working with him. It was perfect. And you get Armando Castro as well. So Armando moving up into stadiums, and he is a world finals uh, champion in the Great Clip Skills Challenge. So Armando uh, on the racetrack and freestyle, always always a threat. But in skills, I mean, he right now is the best in the world. Yeah, he is a world champion skills. I don't think he'll be pulling off what he did at the world finals every single yeah. weekend, but he's going to make it hard. I mean, even when we did the summer shows and he kind of moves up, they kind of put some arena people on stadiums. He was doing sweet. I mean, he was doing a lot of stuff. He's going to make that pretty tough on the skills, but I don't know if he has the, the wow factor it takes to keep up in stadium. But I think he's going to do just fine. But in terms of winning, I think Tyler's going to be a little tougher with skills just because he has that more of a variety range where Armando's super skilled in the nose wheelies, but I don't know if he has the bicycles down yet where Tyler's got both of them. 
see, I, this, I, I love having you on my show because not only do you call me out when I'm wrong, but you talk smack to other drivers and, you know, you, you, you say it like it is. That's why I love you, you call Joe Foley a, a, a fire hat freak. You know, just, I love it, man. It's, uh, that's why I need you. Um, real quick, man, we got about a minute left. Let's talk about the, the other competitors you're going up against. You got Barry Musawa, Colt Stevens, and Camden Murphy. Um, Camden, we don't know what he's going to be driving yet. He went from Bakugan Dragonoid to the Amazing Spider Man to we don't know yet. You get Colt Stevens, who is a World Finals High Jump champion, freestyle champion, and then Mr. Consistent. Barry Musauer. Of those three drivers, who do you think would be the biggest threat to you and anyone else for the series championship? I would say probably Camden. I think Camden was in the race last year. And uh, not to talk bad about the other guys, but you know, Camden, he, he was in the he was in the running. It was him, Adam, and I think Ryan were fighting for one, two, and three. And uh, I don't know, it's gonna be tough for him, especially if he does run something. I don't know what's he gonna be in, but I think that's going to be probably a huge factor in what goes on. I think if they keep him in something nice, something exciting, I think that could help him or hurt him. So hopefully Camden uh, has another good year like he did last year. I was kind of rooting for him for a little bit there against the Anderson boys. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's tough out here. All right. Well, Chris and Stadium Championship Series kick East kicks off January 4th and 5th in Snapdragon Stadium, San Diego. Make sure you get your tickets at monsterjam.com. Chris, great to have you, man. Thank you so much, and uh, good luck to you, buddy. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. It was good to be on again. Hopefully I didn't talk too much smack to too many of the drivers. They're all going to be texting you mad at me exactly. later. There's no such thing on this show. Coming up <laughs> next, we break down the West with Kayla Blood. Stick around. More Inside Monster Jam is on the way. Welcome back to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. I'm Scott Jordan. We are previewing the 2025 Stadium Championship Series this week. We heard from Chris Kohler, and now we shift over to the West Series to welcome back Sparkle Smash driver Kayla Blood. Kayla, welcome back to Inside Monster Jam. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. We're looking forward to getting back in the truck, especially this weekend in Glendale. I'm ready to talk about the new year, though. Yeah, well, listen, before we go forward, we do have to go backwards because it's been the, the summer <laughs> of Sparkle Smash for you, and you, you have been tearing it up. Fans all over the world have been able to see you and, and your fearless six-ton unicorn. You won an event championship in Los Angeles. How has the summer of Sparkle Smash treated you? Oh, man, it's been absolutely incredible. You know, um, to be able to drive the six-ton unicorn with a bold attitude and really embody everything that that means. And, uh, you know, the the seeing little girls come out there and the reaction on everyone's faces when they do see this unicorn up close is pretty awesome man and like almost to the point where it brings tears to my eyes because the little girls are super excited and i'm just like man i'm sitting here don't realize or really like recognize how much you mean to these little girls and then to go out there and be such a strong female role model it's absolutely amazing. So I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. I've made lots of Sparkle Smash best friends. And we're building Sparkle Smash's stats up. You know, like we're going out there. We're winning against really awesome drivers. And uh, we're holding our own out here. And it's not just little girls. I had a chance to go to some live events this summer. I've, I've, I've seen, you know, little boys. I've, I've seen grown men, dads like me, with the Sparkle Smash Pluff truck, just holding on to it like it's the favorite thing in the world. So I, this truck has really yeah. hit home with a lot of people. I absolutely love it. You know, a lot of the guys you can hear in the videos, they're like, unicorn backflip as soon as I go for the backflip. So <laughs> it's super awesome to see everyone enjoying it. And, um, you know, like I said, I want to just be able to go out there and represent Sparkle Smash in the best way because this has been a toy for so long and something that a lot of people have wanted to see um, a real monster dam truck for so long so I love being the driver of Sparkle Smash and I'm just having so much fun and man I cannot wait for the new year a new start new monster dam truck and I'm looking so forward to it and before we get to your series you're going to get a teammate on the Sparkle Smash side in the arenas you get Jamie Sullivan to take over this unicorn on the Arena Championship Series. How, how are you feeling about expanding the Sparkle Smash team next year? I mean, I definitely think it needs to be done. You know, people want to see the unicorn. So we got to give you guys the unicorn. And I think Jamie is a great driver. I said it from day one. You know, the first time I seen her drive, I said, man, she is going to be a world champion one day. When I seen her at the Superstar Challenge and they said, you can get two backflips, but you can only hit the eight pack. And she backed up and she hit that eight pack right after she did it after the other. And it was awesome. And I was like, she's awesome. So I feel like she's that bold driver and uh, she's very talented. So I think she fits well with the Sparkle Smash. 
team and I'm super excited to have her on. So it's going to be an awesome year. Well, let's talk about Stadium Championship Series West. It kicks off January 4th at Angel Stadium in Anaheim, California. Um, this, the, uh, all the series are, are just stacked from top to bottom and, and everywhere you look <laughs> on this series, you have drivers that can win any given night. You get the Andersons, uh, Ryan and Adam, you get Tristan England, who has been just a, a force in JCB Digatron, Jamie Garner coming back, Bryce Kenny in a truck uh, yet to be announced. Cole Venard, you get Matt, Nick, and Mike Pag, the Arulos. Now, three Pags uh, all the was <laughs> all the Pags there. And then you also get Zach Garner, who is uh, only the World Finals racing champion. So he elevates himself to stadium. Let's talk about Zach first, because on the racetrack at World Finals in SoFi Stadium, he was absolutely untouchable. I know he's done a, a few stadium events since then, but how, uh, how are you feeling about lining up against an uh, independent driver, Zach Garner, who is now a world champion? Oh, man, all these little guys, man. I tell you what, these little boys, I've tried to, I try to put them in their place. I try not to talk too much smack, you know, but it is awesome whenever I'm able to get on the line and get a win against them. But, oh, my goodness, yes, uh, Zach Garner, you know, I've driven with his dad in the past and now I'll drive with him and just to see his talent. It's all very intimidating. And, uh, you know, I just hope, like I said, for the opportunity to get on the line and to have the opportunity to, you know, beat them or, you know, at any point in time. But even with that being said, I'm looking for each and every driver. I'm looking for something to learn from them. And that's the most important thing is learning each and every time I get out there with a different competitor. I've learned so much from Ryan, from Adam, from Tyler, from Todd, from so many drivers, but I get the opportunity now to see what Zach Warner has and, uh, you know, kind of put that in my, my style somehow, you know, so either way, I'm going to get better. I'm going to learn something, but win or lose. So bring it on. <laughs> uh, I, I love, I love the confidence. And, and I, I know you try to put us in our place a little boys. We need that every now and then Kayla, we need <laughs> to be humbled yeah. every now and then you, and you, and you do your, you do your talking in the truck. And I love that about you. And we're going to come back and talk about some of the other boys. You're going to be trying to knock off the freestyle and racetrack that is coming up next on inside monster jam powered by Lucas oil. Welcome back to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. I am joined right now by Sparkle Smash driver Kayla Blood as we break down Stadium Championship Series West. It's hard enough to beat one Anderson at an event. How are you going to beat two? You know, sometimes with them, it's just a mind game for me. And, um, you know, I, I can I know I can do it if I get out there and I really try, but I just got to be two turns ahead and be ready for them, you know, especially in racing. You know, I've been able to accomplish beating both of them in racing, and I will never forget that every time I line up with them. You know, win or lose, I'm just so thankful to be here and be on this tour once again of uh, these awesome competitors and you know, <laughs> Ryan Anderson, Adam Anderson, like you said, all all the guys on my tour, it's just to be here says a lot. And, you know, I got to be able to go out there and prove why I belong here, why I belong with all of these amazing drivers. And when I'm not out there doing that, I'm not happy. So I'm going out there with every bit of passion that I have. I don't care if it's Ryan, Adam, Todd, Tristan, bring it on. I'm ready for all of you guys. And uh, like I said, last year, the past two years, I feel like we've been kind of plagued with things at the beginning of the year. And it kind of it kind of took that momentum away from us. So I am going in focus, not letting the past deter me or determine what is happening in the future. And I'm going to be positive. And I know my, my crew chief crawl dad, he's ready for it. You know, um, Louisiana strong over here. Yeah. We're coming for everybody, but uh, we're excited. And uh, like I said, no matter who it is, bring it on. Uh, we just talked about humbling the boys. And I, I don't know that there is a, a driver in monster jam that is harder to humble than Todd LaDuke. Uh, in Megalodon, he he loves to win, and when he does, he'll let you know that he loves to win. Um, and and he's not he's not shy about that. But he he's he's got he's a guy that win or lose just has an exuberant amount of confidence, which I I admire. How do you humble a driver like Todd LaDuke? Yeah, <laughs> by by beating him more than once, yeah. like beating him back to back. I would say, you know, because it's like maybe luck the first time, but I get him the second time. I got you, bud. Like yeah. you got to give me respect after that, you know. So, uh, yeah, Todd, uh, watching him in two, oh, man, it's like you think he's going to – it's, it's going to be a 50-50, and sometimes he just pulls it out of nowhere, and it's like, man, okay, I'm going to uh, look to go get that higher backflip than Todd Leduc. How about that? I don't I don't know if Todd can handle being beaten by a unicorn. I'm not sure that we've dealt with that yet. <laughs> not all the boys want to be beat by a unicorn, so yeah. that's the best 
part about it. That's, that's even better. <laughs> when, when, I mean, when you were in Soldier Fortune, it's one thing to get beaten by the U.S. military, to be beaten by this. Now you're, now you're in this incredible unicorn. And so you're going to have, have a lot of guys really, like, with their heads down when you start rolling over them in Sparkle Smash. Yeah, I'm, I mean, oh, yeah. I try to tell them, keep it on the track. Yeah. Don't be salty when we get off the track. We all friends on the track. You know, that's don't right. be salty when we after this because yeah. I beat you on the track. That's gonna be that's gonna be a developing story throughout the 2025 season. <laughs> Let's talk about Tristan England because he uh, he's a world finals racing champion, made it back to the finals at SoFi Stadium in year two at JCB Digatron. So now we have these two high profile trucks in Digatron and Sparkle Smash on the same series colliding. That's a great matchup because it represents two opposite ends of the spectrum. And, and the Monster Jam fans. So uh, how, how do you strategize against a driver like Tristan, who always just seems to be in there? Even when you count him out, he comes right back. I've kind of learned a lot from Tristan. I kind of um, grew in the sport with him. He's also been there at MJU to kind of coach me and help me through some of the things that I've learned. So uh, with that being said, you know, he's kind of had to teach us some of his tricks. So I'm hoping that all these tricks that he's taught me <laughs> over the past few weeks and months, maybe I can use some of, the, some of them against him. But for real, though, um, just like lining up with any other driver, anybody else, I'm going to go at it the same way and be focused in. And, and all these drivers are great. I mean, Bryce Kenny, Colvinar, Jamie great. Garner, Matt, Nick, Michael Pagliarulo, any one of them can, can beat you hands down. But I, I, I really I love this series because I feel like th this is one where you really can't pinpoint on any given night somebody is going to win all three competitions who's going to win the championship so it gives a little more room i think for surprises and i love that uh real quick let's talk about california for you you always do well there you kick off the season in anaheim what are your expectations week one i love the fact that we're starting in california at my favorite stadium yeah so i'm looking forward to seeing everybody in california in sparkle smash competing on the stadium series for those points for the first time if i don't walk away from there with more than one point this year because i don't know if y'all know that's what happened last year only on one point yeah. at the beginning of the end of the <laughs> yeah so we're not gonna let that happen i will get out there and run the track myself just give me more than one point <laughs> you're gonna be fine it's onward and upward that was soldier fortune now we're talking sparkle smash here so you know it's, it's a different story kayla best of luck to you i can't wait to see you. we're gonna have all that coverage of your series on mav tv so we look forward to seeing you in sparkle smash in 2025 can't wait guys see you there and as for you folks thanks so much for joining me this year it's been a great season for inside monster jam the good news is we are back for season four 40 new episodes Episodes coming your way next year right here on MAV TV on YouTube and for downloads. So thank you so much. Wouldn't be here without you. I'll see you next year on another brand new edition of Inside Monster Jam powered by Lucas Oil.